And good morning, Twitch. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me do uh, a few warm up rounds of John Hill today. My goldies may or may not join me today. I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And if they join, great. And if not, not well, then it's just you and me. We'll get this handled. So I'm going to start with Feast of Famine first. Run over there. If you to turn on my feather fall, so I'm just going to slide down the side of the mountain because. That's a little road rash between my friends. It is the first thing in the morning here. I am just having my coffee. So if it seems a little stilted, that's why I am not properly caffeinated as of yet. This hideaway may keep the orcs safe, but there is no land big enough for my kind. Our safety must be carved out by sword and blood. What blood have I shed? My memories are lost. There you go. Storm Reaver's been smoking too bad. Smoking's bad for you, don't do that. Um, okay. I always get a giggle out of that uh, picture of the orc on that loading screen. Because for those of us old enough to remember, that looks almost identical to the way the old Warhammer orcs looked in the pack. Right down to the little swirl on the end of the scimitar. Just a flashback to Nam, as it were. For those of us grognards who were there the first time. Alright, so basically, um... We're going to go, uh, orcs live here, so we're going to run through their house and murder a lot of people because something, something, they did a bad thing. The orc know. you spoke to outside oh, told you if you poison. hurry, you may and reach the leader uh, before the hunting party returns. If you're going to bring freedom and democracy to somebody in their home, make sure that you bring enough bullets. So I'm going to go spare you the agony of my normal 10 hour doing the man's I to go through all 12 of my calls to figure out who's got what. I re-equipped everything. And most of the stuff I had is pretty... Well, actually, that's not the same. I was going to say it's pretty much the same, but that's a straight up lie. It's not. I have the uh, level 15 Diplomancer. Again, this comes out of the anniversary that And it is just an upgrade of the previous one. Uh, because I'm inquisitive, it has kind of everything I wanted all at once. It has, let's see if I can mouse over it again. There we go. It has diplomacy, distant diversion, which um, decreases my threat when I'm using a ranged weapon. Bleeding, so anything that actually is alive, I can kill it. Uh, impactful, which is force damage. And as you can see, it has um, the critical range um, threat and multiplier. I am also using the Wildwood set out of Sharn, so I have the Wildwood outfit, currently not slotted with anything, Wildwood circlet, which I have my resistance plus 5, um, accuracy plus 12, which is great, double shot 5%, um, that is actually have because I'm, I'm using the equitative thing, but you know, every little bit helps, still have Volcurum pendant and the bloodstone, which gives me my Volcurum chosen set bonus. I am still using the Twist Hollow Cloak and the Summoner Spectacles because there's literally nothing better in the game until you get the legendary equivalent of them. A bronze Dragon Scale Belt. Again, this is out of Sharn in, I believe, uh, Magma Must Flow is the name of the quest. This is a fantastic item. It's almost redundant with, with the uh, stats on the armor, but it is... Um, con 8, Healing 30, Insightful, False Life, um, Death Block, which is actually Life Sealed, so it's actually reducing incoming damage. Death Block will prevent you from actually being killed, but it doesn't actually prevent the damage unless you have Death Ward. This is actually um, re reducing the damage. So if you don't have Death Ward, this is already reducing the damage that I would take from negative energy by 24%, so that's amazing. I think Belt of 3, Sapphire of Natural Armor, which is redundant. Um, key lock ring because I need to find this stuff. Otherwise, I would be using this, which is my celestial topaz ring, 
uh, Charisma 8, I crafted that because I was using a lot of uh, Charisma builds at the time. Um, Wizardry, more spell points. Parrying 3, which is insight bonus to all my saves and my AC. Um, blurry, which is amazing to have on all the time, which is, again, a little bit redundant because on the Wild Wood Gauntlets, I have uh, Blurry as well, plus dodge 8%, natural armor 8, distant diversion 8. So a lot of redundancy, actually, in this set bonus. Um, but the reason why I'm doing it chamber boots are the same as before and uh, this is the, uh, actually kind of a new piece of gear I just put this together the celestial sapphire ring um, I crafted it with intelligence 8 because intelligence is good for rogues or um, inquisitives and artificers anything that's trapping is going to want intelligence and it has improved deception which in addition to doing additional damage with sneak attacks also um, makes them vulnerable to sneak attacks which is amazing Again, more dodge. Profane Well Rounded, which is a, a stacking profane bonus to all of my stats, and a Mythic Boost Plan. And I put um, a Diamond of Strength in here because I didn't have it really slotted anywhere else. And then here's something that's a kind of a blast from the past. This is the Barbet's Bracers. And it's Insightful Strength to attack for. That's not stacking with anything I have right now, but it is all on heroism all the time. So I never have to worry about that. Um, and I slotted it with a Diamond of Vitality and a Topaz of Fear Immunity because being feared is balls and it makes me an immune to fantastic killer fortunately side because if we don't we're gonna be stepping on the spikes we did also pick up a few new spells one of which of course was my displacement draft is basically displacement that's extremely handy to have i don't turn it on all the time because the duration is short and i currently do not have extend i also picked up the heightened meta magic feat which i basically use only for my glue bombs because i'm going to work here i don't even have to worry about using two of my set bonuses and my small Another one of the ones you can get out of Shrine, I believe it's the Celestial Ruby, will actually give you all on Ghost Touch, um, which is fine. I don't mind that, but it just isn't really working with what I'm trying to do with this particular build. I almost got the kinks hammered out of this build. Is uh, does have a blind spot with, um, listen to me again, not properly caffeinated, um, deadly. There's no deadly on this particular build as it stands right now. Um, if I had the new version of the Bloodstone, that would all be moot because this would be um, Seeker and Deadly plus Deception. It's the, the new Bloodstone is hilariously superior to the old one. Um, and the old one was considered the best slot item when it came out. So yeah, I do actually have the epic version of the Bloodstone with the new stats on it. However, the, because I used the old stone to make it, it doesn't have any stats. The orcs are factioned this wing into a makeshift living the sands, um, To actually get that. And I probably might um, show a video. I know Strim Tom did one that was uh, pretty good. Um, showing you the like an efficient way to find out uh, um, desert sands items by going in and out. And, things, and that's worth watching if you haven't seen it already. But the idea is basically... You go, into, you go into one of the nearby quests, you call a hireling and dismiss it because it resets the instance and then you go back and run around it again. There are three places where the bloodstone can actually drop, um, and two of them are kind of right next to each other, but the drop rate is hilarious. I have played this game for 10 years now almost, give or take a minute, and um, I have three bloodstones. And that is what's actively looking for. 
for the leadstone every time I come out of the quest in the quest nearby. So, again, it is pretty bad. Some of the drop rates are treacherous, like Zodiac, Spear, and Final Fantasy XII treacherous, but um, it can be done. If you want it bad enough, it can happen. But bear in mind that on the first um, character, one of my aunts that I actually tried to farm it out on, I literally maxed out all of the Slayers in Heroic and had him at experience cap before I actually got it to drop. And that was, oh, I forgot to get the actual key because I'm still talking. Still not caffeinated. There we go. Ruzak draws his weapon intent on not letting as Ruzak slips to the ground. And one of the things I just highlighted was that um, the set bonus from putting all the wall watch items on is uh, plus one sneak attack dies, um, plus 15% artifact bonus to fortification bypass, which is huge. So for undead and constructs, I'm bypassing 40% of their uh, fortification right now. 10% uh, artifact bonus to double shot, so that's amazing. Um, and a 10% artifact bonus to my range power. Um, so realistically, there's not much I could have done to improve on those bonuses. The only thing in my personal opinion that could have been improved is if I'd had um, the new bloodstone to get the deadly as well. And again, I could probably have done that, but if you're gonna do it, you might as well just do it all the way. A lot of um, gearing is in fact just like, Exercise and compromises. The devs themselves said they wanted to be able to make the whole thing more hard choices. Sometimes they get that just right, and sometimes their hard choices are uh, not much of a choice at all. So, in this case, it was kind of a hard choice. I could have gone a couple of different ways and chose to do, do it this way, um, because ultimately, this is a ranged build not a spell casting build. It does do some spell casting, but not a lot. Just kind of, kind of fill in the gaps that would otherwise be Because realistically, there's not much about this. You hear the unmistakable <laughs> grunts and grunts of hobgoblins. That Artificer doesn't do. Have been dispatched. For reasons what I do not understand. In the orc and um, by the looks of it, these hobgoblins had only recently After tunneled in. Level 20, like, hilariously, it falls off. It's like, um, not even a contest. Whereas this build, um, I have run this particular build all the way to level cap, um, soloing uh, epic elites and R1s with nominal difficulty. Again, you always have to be aware that. A random reaper spawn or just bad luck on rules, um, which I seem to get a lot of, will undo any quest. But it's a particular series struggle to even play warriors there at the bloody worst. And I am not even going to bother calling around with that. I'm going to call my hireling and get another top of here. Just faster than fooling around with self heals for ten minutes. And always property damage to improve learning. And we're walking. Now, I'd, al I'd also like to point out that this is something that kind of gets glossed over. Especially in some of the Ginger Spice videos when he's doing these things like, oh look, I'm still learning all these things. And that's great, he's, he's good at what he does, but here's the thing. Um, video scales. So, while I'm in this quest by myself, so I'm just the, just the little hiring, the scaling is actually significantly less than if I was in with a party of six people. Which is why um, a lot of the experience farming for wilderness areas, like Thunder Bloom, or Orchard of the Macabre, which you see a lot of them, they, they specifically won't even start running them until they have like a full raid group. At which point, you get the maximum number of spawns, and it's very noticeable. It's even noticeable when you 
wind disturbance. You enter into another wing the, that has been just the, the converted into makeshift living quarters. Uh, flip you from life and gold is extraordinary. All of a sudden, you've gone from having, you know, 10 or 12 mobs to having. So, that's something to consider. And not only are there fewer mobs, uh, generally speaking, but they are the lower level. Now, it's my understanding that Reaper does not scale. It only scales internally, so Reaper 1 to 10 scales, but it does not scale the numbers the same way. Everything is always at the maximum possible allotment, and all that little cool goes up. So we have kind of higher saves and more damage. So basically the percentages are being ramped up, but the actual mob numbers are not, they're always at the maximum level. And that's, again, a difference, um, if you were playing these on Elite, it would be totally different. At least that is my Your understanding, let me know in the chat. As Zekir drops to the ground, you hear a soft metal clank. on this trap. Kind of moot since I already set it on, but there we go. It's the noise of the Potion on the run. Everybody gets it now. So there's no excuse to not be walking on the run. Everybody gets a beer hat now. Is you can farm a um, ruby of ghost blood out of the night rebels. I have a bunch of those already that I've already farmed out, but um, in my experience, they're not as valuable as the uh, as the damage boosts I know. So I would rather have no damage all the time. Lose that damage to have it permanently slotted with Ghost Touch in case a Reaper might show up. Now, the Reapers seem to show up a lot more frequently than they used to. But certainly, the vast majority of the time, and Q the Reaper that jumps right into the Reaper. The Orc Command Post loses. So I have some other people around here and there on uh, team calls, so it can't be particularly loud. My usual boisterous self. So if it seems somewhat um, subdued, that is also what's happening. This hideaway may keep the orcs safe, but there is no land big enough for my kind. Our safety must be carved out by sword and blood. What blood? 